I'm Brian Van from SportBikeTrackGear.com and today we're going to do a product review on the all new Scorpion EXO R710 helmet. $189.95 solid colors, $199.95 solid matte black and then $209.95 for all the graphics. This helmet is going to be available in sizes that will span from extra small all the way to 3XL. No restocking fees here at STG if you get the R710 from us. It doesn't fit the way you hoped. You need to exchange it. Not a problem. You get the helmet. It doesn't meet your expectations. You want to send it back for a refund. We can do that for you too. Free shipping for any order over $40 to the lower 48 United States with really affordable international shipping rates. Okay, brand new ground up helmet for Scorpion. Its predecessor was the 700. We're going to talk about all this, right? Let's hit some of the quick bullet points first, right? This helmet is certified to the latest and greatest Snell certification, the M2015. In a size medium on our digital shipping scale, it weighed just over, I think, 3.6 pounds. So the weight is right where it should be for a helmet of that size that is Snell certified. Let's talk about fit. The helmet offers an intermediate oval fit pattern. This is something Scorpion's really been refining over the years when they first came out with the 700. I have an intermediate oval head. 58 centimeters is what I measure. Size chart takes me to a medium. I put on the medium. I got a good, comfortable fit. I rode in the helmet. You saw that in the first part of the video. So everything I'm going to share here about the features and benefits, it's going to be a lot of first person stuff blended with some of the manufacturer text, but I think the first person stuff is really the most important. Okay, we talked about how that this is the successor to the ever popular Scorpion 700 helmet. You can see I've got one here. This is a couple of my helmets. This one I had a little accident in. This is an autographed Matt Maladin model when he was riding in the 700. 700 was a game changing helmet. That was when people found you could get a helmet with premium level quality, phenomenal performance, right, for about $200. That was about 10 years ago. They were able to take and bring a helmet to market, which is the R710, about 10 years later, that has all the features and benefits they've learned, the advancements they've learned, poured into it. For the same price they did this, remember this was like the home run in, in value helmets when it came out. I remember a lot of racers and, and track riders back when this was introduced came off the fence, stopped spending big money on premium helmets, and started buying Scorpions because of the features, benefits, quality, performance, and protection that they offered. Okay, so this was kind of a real eye-opener and game-changer for people. This also brought a lot of the other helmet manufacturers to a point where they had to step up their game because they were making helmets that were so far behind this it was ridiculous and it took them a long time to do that. And I'd say a lot of the other manufacturers now they are producing good quality helmets around that price point. Now once again Scorpion changes the game and they come out with the R710 which I feel is light years beyond this one. I've ridden in both, okay, light years beyond this one and they've stepped up over all the competition at this price point. Again, I feel that this is the best helmet you're going to buy in this $200 price bracket. Fit good, fit comfortable, true to size. Use the size chart. Intermediate oval is the head shape, and that particular head shape fits most people well. They've also developed this so that it'll accommodate wearing eyeglasses or sunglasses much easier than the older versions did, so they blended all that stuff into there. What kind of rider is this right for? This is going to be right for a sport bike rider that's riding on the street or the racetrack. That's really what it's designed for in terms of helmet shape, field of vision, ventilation, design, right? Does that mean you can't ride it on an upright bike? Of course not. If you want to wear this on an upright bike, it's going to work well there for you, but we do have some other helmets in the Scorpion line that have more touring level features built into them that might be more appropriate. Of course, race track duty, either racing or track days, this helmet is definitely going to be appropriate and it's going to be really affordable in case you happen to do this to it. You do this to a $900 helmet, that, that sucks a lot, trust me when I tell you that. You do that to a $200 helmet, 
Hopefully you're okay, just go out, buy another lid, you're good to go. It's a lot easier to spend that $200 a second time than it is the 900. And considering they're both passing that Snell 2015 protection, I would say it's really on par at the end of the day. Ventilation, one of the most important things that we talk about with the helmet in terms of features. Intake vent down here on the chin. This is going to demist the shield and it's also going to allow some airflow in the chin area. It is a two position vent. Intake vent up here, brow level. It's either on or off. You can see it, large intakes there. Up here on the top of the helmet, on the crown, two switchable vents. They're either on or off. And when you move it to the off position, it's spring loaded. The quality of the vents feels really nice. So we've got a lot of intake for exhaust. Some Venturi style exhaust here blended into the shell. Got a diffuser here at the top of the helmet with more exhaust built into it. I rode it with the vents open, with the vents closed. The airflow is phenomenal. I did notice that as you get more of a sport bike centric position where you have your head down just a little bit, you could really feel the ventilation kind of kick up a notch. In a perfectly upright position, it worked well. In that more sport bike centric position, it worked phenomenal. Okay. Noise level. I would say the noise level for a helmet that vents this well is right where it should be. Maybe leans a little bit towards the quiet side. If you're sensitive to the noise, you're going to want to wear earplugs. If you're riding for long periods of, of time, you're going to want to wear earplugs just like you would with any other helmet to avoid hearing damage, right? Just for short runs around town, you could easily go without plugs. I don't think it would be a big deal at all. It's not really noisy. What adds to the low noise production? Is going to be the thick neck roll, which really seals that out here, and it comes complete with the chin curtain. Shield. Scorpion has the best fog-free shield on the market. They have since they came out with their first helmets, and that has carried through year after year, model after model. It's Michigan weather right now. Okay, we're talking 40s at best. I rode the helmet with the chin curtain in, with the shield down, zero fogging issues. That for me is a huge feature. Whether you're riding on the racetrack or riding on the street, fog is a distraction. It's not something you want to deal with. So this has the best fog-free shield. Shield lock, push back, locks the shield down. Push forward, you're going to get a little crack, a bit of a demist function. Honestly, you really don't need that because the shield doesn't fog up with the Everclear unless the conditions are so overwhelming, right, like you're snowmobiling in this thing, then you might need to crack the shield. Uh, shield on, shield off. Go ahead and lift it all the way in the upward most position. Push forward on this trigger. Roll the helmet over, repeat the process, and the shield comes right off the helmet. No problem. Field of vision on this, peripheral, Phenomenal. Top to bottom, phenomenal. I did not notice any restrictions at all. It's got an excellent field of vision, much better so than we had with the 700. Reinstallation of the shield is as easy as the removal process. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look for this cutout right here, and you want to line it up with this tab right here on the shield. Dip that in, like so. Put a little pressure on it snaps right in place. Repeat the process on the other side, dip that in, push this down, lift it up and down a couple of times to make sure you're good to go. That easy. We're going to take it back off just for the purpose of the rest of this video. I'm going to show you the liner, how that comes out. Okay, we already showed you it comes complete with a chin curtain. It's removable if you want to do so. Just grab it on the edge. It fits nice and tightly between the EPS line chin and the actual helmet shield itself. Emergency release cheek pads. They've got some reflective piping here on the bottom. They did a great job with this. I think they call it out better than the other manufacturers have and they have a very simple mechanism to do this. We've got an emergency use only tag here on the side of the helmet on the chin bar and then this is clearly labeled emergency. To remove the pads, like so, pulls right out. Everything stays intact. 
There are no pieces to reassemble. All you need to do is pop your cheek, cheek pad back in the helmet. Just like they always have large snaps, they engage very positively. This stuff really stands the test of time. Quick wick, moisture wicking fabric, high density foam, contoured nicely to your face. You won't find anybody doing it better than Scorpio when it comes to quality of their liner. We're going to remove the other side the traditional way. I'm going to get my fingers in between the EPS of the helmet and the back of the cheek pad. We've got three snaps. Grab it up here at the leading edge. Pull it out. No problem. Removable top pad. Two snaps at the back. Up here at the front. Get your finger between the attachment point there and the EPS. You're going to release three snaps. Same high level of quality, quick look fabric here found in the top pad. We also have removable strap covers. Quick wick fabric, padded, nice and comfortable, feels great against the skin. A little tougher to get these out. This isn't something you'll do all the time. You got to be able to get your finger in there to disengage that snap. And these pull right off. You can wash all this. Remember, mild detergent, right? Hand wash, line dry. Do not throw the stuff in the dryer. Dual density EPS. Can you get a good look at that, Tyler? You can see the channeling in the EPS, the large intake holes, right, that line up with the vents nicely. Excellent airflow, lots of protection with the dual density EPS. You got EPS all the way around, EPS line chin bar. Let's talk about the shell. The shell is a fiberglass aramid mixed shell, right? So you have a high level of strength and protection with that, right, that lines up with some of the other premium helmets on the market. You know, a lot of people, they really delineate premium helmets, start with fiberglass, right, composite shells, you know, versus the more injection molded plastic stuff, which has also come a long way, but this is a fiberglass aramid matrix shell, so it's a high quality shell. Okay, I think we've done a good job covering all the features, the benefits, right? I've given you an idea that I really like this helmet quite a bit. I love the EXO 700. We've sold millions of them, arguably more than any retailer has ever before. Closeouts we've run. One of the best products of all time. This is simply better than that. I expect from looking at it that the durability and quality levels will only exceed what we enjoyed over here. The fit is better, the ventilation is better, the field of vision is better, the fog free shield is on par with what we had here. This is phenomenal. It's a game changer at this $200 and just under price point. You're not going to find a better helmet in that range. They got some really cool graphics. I'm going to give this my personal two thumbs up. The highest recommendation I can give for a product in this price range. This is the all new EXO R710 helmet. I'm Brian Vance for BikeTrackier.com.